Hello everyone, this is International Master Robert Jamison from Kids Unlimited in Melbourne, Australia. And I'd like to show you a short online game I played a few years ago against a, a young junior named Jason Chu. Wasn't a bad player, rated about 1750. And the point of this video is I thought to myself, well, I'm really old and I don't like analysing a lot. What would happen if I just played the first move that popped into my head, like the obvious move? How would I go? So I'm playing black. How about you do the same thing? I give you five to 10 seconds per move to choose your move and we can compare notes and see whether we agree on what is the, the best move each time. And how will we go not being able to analyze? Could be fun. Okay, let's get started. So white plays e4, I play e5, knight f3. And to get you started, I play f5. This is the Latvian gambit. Probably not a very good opening, but an unusual opening. So what you need to understand is in the opening, it's a battle to play on like your home ground, play an opening you know and understand better than your opponent. So white probably should play knight takes e5, taking an important center pawn, but maybe he was a little bit scared. He played d3. Okay, so let's get started. You have five or 10 seconds. What is the obvious move for black? Okay, it should be pretty easy because he's attacking two of our pawns. The more important pawn is the e pawn and we're trying to develop our pieces. So knight c6 seems to be the obvious move. He replies knight c3. Okay, black's next move. Again, this one's pretty obvious. Knight f6. So we're following the general rule, knights before bishops. And the other rule we have is move each piece only once and put it on the best square. And knights in the middle are a lot better than knights on the side. So, so far, so good. He now pins our knight. All right, you have a choice of a few reasonable moves now. What would you play as black? So I would probably consider h6 or bishop e7, but a little bit more aggressive. I'm going to play bishop b4 and pin his knight. He replies with bishop e2. All right, black to play. Again, there are a few reasonable moves. You could consider h6 or castles perhaps. Um, he might be threatening to take your f pawn, so I chose d6. So supporting my f pawn, if he takes it, I can just recapture with the bishop. He plays castles. What is your next move? So one thing to bear in mind is that every move changes the position. So a good strategy is often to ask yourself, how has this move changed the position? For instance, it's made white's king safe and activated his rook. It might have also done something else. All right, have you decided on your move? I took the knight. The change, of course, is the knight was no longer pinned to the king and he's possibly threatening knight d5 to swap off a few pieces and attack my bishop on b4. So off with his knight. And of course, he now has a weakened pawn structure. He has an isolated pawn and two double pawns. Black to play. What do you do? Choose. Uh, 
I'm guessing a lot of you might have chosen castles, which is a perfectly fine move, but I've just lost my dark squared bishop. White has the two bishops. So I thought, okay, let's see if I can get him to give up one of his bishops. Now he's between a, a rock and a hard place because bishop g5 wasn't a particularly good pin because if he takes, I re can recapture with a developing move. If he tries to keep the pin, then, then he's losing his bishop. And if he runs away somewhere, well, he just wasted time. Anyway, he took. Right, Black's next move is pretty obvious. We have to take back and we only have the pawn or the queen. And naturally you take back with the queen, recapture with developing move. White now plays queen d2, so he's connected his rooks. So he's just about completed his development. Black to play, what would you choose? You could consider f4 with the idea of doing a nice pawn storm on the king side. You could consider takes to further isolate his pawns. Uh, the move I chose was castles. One concept you need to understand is preserving your options. So often in a scenario like this, where you have a potential capture, it's better to leave it, keep the tension on and keep in guessing. Because each time he has to think, should I take him? Is he going to take me? Is he going to push past? So by leaving the situation unresolved, you've caused him to have more things to think about. All right, let's see what he does. Rook e1, rook a e1. All right, that was a mysterious move to me because uh, rooks usually like to be on open files or behind pawns you're going to push. So I'm not sure whether this is going to be an open file for his rook. Anyway, so be it. Blacks go. Choice of a couple of moves. Which one do you choose? So f4 might be a reasonable option again. I chose takes, takes. So now we've weakened his pawns, we've isolated his double pawns, and we've made certain this isn't going to be an open file for his rook. So we've settled him with a few little problems with his pawn structure. Blacks go. Should be a fairly easy move to see. Hopefully you've decided. Um, normally there's an order in which you develop your pieces. So we're, we're still in the phase where we're trying to develop our pieces. We've got a pawn in the middle, so we've got some space. We've made our king safe, but we have two undeveloped pieces here and it's the bishop's turn to move. Uh, now you wouldn't go here because that's not a pin and we don't really want to trade our good bishop. That is our bishop on the opposite colour to our centre pawns for that night. But we do want to put our bishop in the middle of the board. So now it is having a look at the king side. It is having a look at the queen side. And even better, it's attacking a pawn. So we're attacking with a developing move that ties down his options. All right, he played a three. Now we've nearly completed our development. My next move is, is probably a hard move um, to find, maybe unless you're a master. So have a look, I'll give you 10 seconds. What would you play as black? Now what you should be thinking about is how can I develop my last developed piece, my rook on a8? What am I going to do with this? All right, some people might think rook e8, but again, that's not an open file. Some people might rook, think rook d8, the idea being presumably to push the pawn and then the rook's on the same line as the queen. That's semi-plausible, but do we want to swap this pawn for this pawn? 
and open up the e-file for his rook? Maybe not. So what are we going to do with the rook? We have a problem. So the move that I chose is rook f7. Where do we want this rook? The answer is we want it here. Rooks belong on open files or half open files. Okay, hope you got that. He goes bishop d3. And now our next move is obvious because I've already given it away, but rook a f8. So let's have a look at the position. Um, white's pawn structure isn't too hot. Black's bishop is better than white's bishop. Black's queen better than white's queen. Black's rook, rook's better than white's rook. And the knight's probably smidgen better than that. So we're doing a great job so far. Doesn't mean we're going to win, but we've set up our position. So many players attack early in the game before they're ready, before they got all their men out. Now imagine your poor old white. You've got to think of something to do. He hasn't got any pawn play. Um, it's a bit difficult. So he looks around for something to attack because people love attacking and he plays rook b1 attacking our b pawn. All right. Our next move is it's fairly obvious b6. We don't want to have a piece tied down to defending that pawn if we can avoid it. Or we're putting the pawn on the opposite colour to our bishop. So that's all good. Now, again, he hasn't got much to do, so he plays a4. All right, this again is a critical position, a sort of position where a lot of players go wrong. They've, they've got a nice position, they've got their men developed. What do they do? So, 10 seconds. What's your move? All right, hope you've decided. All right, so when you don't know what to do, there's a few options. Um, you can say, well, where should I be playing? Should I be playing on the queen side, the center, or the king side? And if you're uncertain, the normal way is to look at your pawn chain. Where is your pawn chain pointing? It's pointing towards the king side. So that would tend to indicate that maybe you should be playing on the king side. Another question you can ask yourself is, can I improve any of my pieces? What's my worst place piece? And when you look at it, this this knight's not doing much it's sort of in the middle but it's not doing much so is there a better square for that knight so one option would be to say well look it's a lovely hole on f4 that would be a good spot for my knight so you might choose knight e7 with the idea of bouncing into f4 for your kingside attack now, I didn't do that. I did a slightly strange move. My knight went the other way. Now, you could quite naturally say, well, well, hang on, Robert. You were saying we should be attacking on the king's side. You'll move your knight to the queen's side on the edge of the board, which isn't a good spot for knights. What's going on? Have you made a blunder? Have a think about it. Why, why did I go there? What's my plan? If you said my plan is to go here to attack the queen, that would be a fail because he can give up his bad bishop for my potentially good knight. The reason I went there is because there is another outpost on the board and that's this square, c5. So my plan was to bring my knight to c5. So that's putting him under pressure. And I was particularly thinking about his a pawn. I thought I put my knight there, I could put my pawn here. I can attack his pawn, so he'll be all tied down to trying to defend his pawn. And then if I really want to attack him on the king's side, I can still go boing de boing and live happily ever after. All right, what did he do? Bishop b5. Now, not sure what that does. 
Bit of a random move. All right, black to play. What is your move? Have you decided? All right. Well, I did not continue with my plan because if knight here, perhaps he can go here and he bishops in a better spot or he might be able to trade in due course. Okay. I did not attack his bishop. It's a plausible move. Uh, trouble is it weakens the, the D pawn. So I'd have to switch to a plan of going D5, which is reasonable. But as I said before, every move changes the position. So how did the bishop going from D3 to B5 change the position? Answer, the E pawn is unprotected. So I thought, I know, I'll just attack that pawn. So I attack the pawn. So actually, this is a double attack because not only am I attacking the pawn, but he has to think, is Robert going to play bishop h3 with pressure on the g pawn as well? So he thought for a few seconds, found a way to get out of both attacks, played rook e1. All right, black to play. Hopefully you can find a good move really quickly, just as I did in the game. Have you seen it? The answer, of course, is that Queen G6 didn't have two threats. It had three threats and he missed one. So I said, thank you for the knight. And of course, he resigned, bringing a piece down. Okay, so when well, you say, Robert, you won because he made a big blunder, which is true, but people make a big blunder because they're under pressure and they don't know what to do necessarily. But I had a, a lovely position anyway. So we were able to knock off a 1750 player in 18 moves without really analyzing or trying to attack. Instead, we were just thinking about our position, putting our pieces on good squares, uh, trying to give him little disadvantages like double pawns if we could along the way and play the first obvious move that came into our head. Okay, so that's something for you to think about in your games. Maybe you don't have to analyze as much as you usually do. Maybe you can get by most of the time with just playing an obvious move. Of course, there are some situations where you have to analyze and you have to look for tactics all the time. But other than that, you can perhaps play a little bit on instinct, just like a really old IM. All right, I hope you enjoyed the lesson and I'll see you all next time.